Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle from Made by Michelle McGraw, and it is December 23rd, so Christmas Eve Eve. <laughs> um, I wanted to do a floss tube because I have several finishes that I wanted to show um, so that I can give them to people. Um, I have one that need, I need to get in the mail. And then I have one finish and one whip to show. So kind of a quick floss tube, I think. I, I do have some haul that I'll share, um, but I wanted to go ahead and show these before it got too late. Um, I was going to do a floss tube earlier to show these and my husband got sick, I got sick, our oldest got sick, his wife got sick, so yeah, everybody has been sick. Everybody has been germy. I am recovering. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a hundred percent, but I would say 85. I think just from the stress of the holidays and getting everything ready. Um, maybe that's why I don't feel a hundred percent, but that has nothing to do with being sick. That's just the stress of the holidays. So I want to get started with some finishes so that I can show you guys these and um, get them out. So I did get a chance to do some fully finishing, which I have been severely lacking. And let me go ahead and show you these. The first one is a gift that I'm going to give to my husband's friends that we stayed with um, on our last trip out in Dallas over Thanksgiving for hosting us. So the pattern is from Sweet Wing Studios and it's one of her Bible verses. And I really think that his family will enjoy this. I have um, a little goodie box put together for them and this is gonna go in it as well. So I started this on the road. Um, we stayed beside, we stayed in a hotel that was beside Hobby Lobby and I went over there and got the um, fabric. Um, it's a brown Ada from Hobby Lobby. Um, and then all I use DMC floss only because that's what Hobby Lobby had. Um, I think her patterns do call for fancy floss, but um, Hobby Lobby didn't have that. So I just used the DMC conversion. I think it turned out well. The only thing I changed is down here on these two verse, these two lines. Um, it is brown outlined with green. And when I started filling it in, I had one all the way filled in and I was working on the other one and I didn't like it. You couldn't read the words very well. And I think it was the difference between having the variegated floss and, and the DMC. So I ended up pulling it out and just did the boxes around it. And I think it turned out much better so you could read it. I did finish, fully finish it with this plaid backing fabric that I thought matched well. And so that's gonna go in um, their box for them. So hopefully they will like that. Um, they're very involved in their church and I think that'll be perfect for them. My husband picked out the Bible verse. Um, Sweet Wing Studios has several Bible verse um, uh, projects and he picked it out, my husband did, um, and said, you know, do that one. Um, she just came out with a new one and I don't remember the name and it's for Christmas and I love it. So I have it in my cart in Etsy. I have to have to go fully buy it. I know that I wasn't gonna stitch it right now. Um, so I was like, well, it can just hang out in my cart for just a little bit. So it is on the list to buy though, cause I really, really do like those. Um, and there, so uh, this project, I think it's like 85 by maybe 60 stitches. It's not that bad, not that, and this is, um, 14 count. So it's not that bad at all. Um, definitely doable. And it's a lot of letters so you can get it done pretty quick. So I like those. All right, the next one, and I'm trying to remember what pattern this is from. I previously showed it as a finish, but not a fully finish. This is from, I'm going to get it wrong if I say it. Mm. I can see the pattern in my mind and I, I can't remember what it's called, who it's by. I will try to let you know in the comments on that um, if you're interested. Um, but I fully finished it. I had it finished before 
So I did cite who the designer was in a previous floss tube. So if you've seen those. So this is Peace and Joy. This is one that I stitched last Christmas and I just never got around to fully finishing it. Um, I used a variegated red. Uh, I do not remember the color I used. Um, I really like the variegation on it though. I used 14 count murky and I finished it with this plaid on the back. This was some of the um, emblem tags. I use iron-on tags from Ever Emblem on Etsy. I don't get paid by them or gifted them in any manner. They're just really great. They've always worked well for me. Um, so it's Ever Emblem. And I finished it with this sparkle ribbon that I had. So a lot of my ribbons that I finish, fully finish with are from my scrapbooking days. And I really like to be able to use what I have on stock. Um, so I have three very full ribbon containers and then I have overflow of like spools that I've bought since my scrapbooking days. And I like it when I'm able to use some of the stuff from my scrapbooking days. So that most likely is a stamping up um, tinsely ribbon. I don't know. Anyhow, I liked that I was able to use it and I used it on another one. So this is one that I showed. I showed all of these previously finished before. So um, this came out of a book of 50, I think it's called 50 Christmas Ornaments. I got it on Amazon. I don't remember who the designer is, um, but it's a really cute book. This is one that I did. Anytime I do ornaments like this, I always try to use a scrap piece of fabric that I have. That I have. Uh, this is, it's a Lugana. It looks like it's a scrap from um, Dyed by Rolanda on Etsy. Um, it is an opalescent fabric. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. Um, I'm not a huge opalescent fan now. Although I think they look really good for Christmas ornaments. Um, I think when I first started stitching, you know, we just had white and then we got some colors and we were thrilled with that. And then we got some opalescent and I was loved it and I stitched on it all the time. And I think I got kind of sick of it. Um, I'll tell you the ornament that did me in. They're on my tree and it's a Santa. I think they're two Santas. And they're a dark fabric with an opalescent inside of them. And that opalescent is so, the, the fiber of it is so thick, it was such a pain to see. Because you have the dark fabric and then your light would hit that opalescent and you couldn't see the holes. I hated that fabric. I actually have two more ornaments in that set to do and they are not going to go on that fabric. Absolutely not. They will get stitched on something different in the future. This was not bad. This is a super light little, it's just a little blingy. I, I do like that kind of opalescent. So uh, once again, this is a ribbon from my stash, but I was able to use that sparkle ribbon right on the side. So I liked that just as a little trim. And this was my backing fabric that I chose. I always use Vanna's method or mostly use Vanna's method to put a ribbon and a hanger on using a button. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. Um, watch her finishing videos because that's a great way to put on a topper. I really, really like that. And if I don't know what else to do, that is my go-to. And I'm like, Vanna's brilliant. Vanna's brilliant. Okay, the next one is from Little Stitcher. I think it's I'll Be Home From Christmas. There's multiple patterns in this pattern. I only did this one, which is the little car with the little gifts on it. I definitely used a scrap. This is another Lugana. I don't, I don't know what Lugana that is. It might be a picture of this plus Lugana, I'm not sure, but a scrap of it. Um, and I finished it with this little ribbon that has like a little, had a little bling to it. So I scrounged it around and then I put the hanger on both sides cause it was a little bigger, my label. And I used the plaid fabric on the back. So that's another one that I had previously stitched and finally getting around to making it into an ornament. 
Okay, this next one is, I always mess up her name and I adore her patterns. So let me, Fairy Wood in the Woods. I think I messed that up. Um, she has these series <coughs> of little ornaments and I adore them. Um, it has a little Bible verse and then the ornament part. And I stitched this last year. It stitched up really quick. Very cute. I love it. I'm always on the lookout for religious ornaments. And so I really, really like her, her series that she's doing like this. So I finished that. I did some roushing of the ribbon, the holder. And then this is my backing fabric, which is some uh, like nativity fabric on the back that I had in stock. So really, really love this one. Just really pretty. So, and the next four that I have are ones that, oh. no, no, come here. Come here, Leah. We're not doing this. Oh. Leah, they're stirring each other up. Hold on a minute. Hold on. So Leo got out of our fence today. We our, our backyard is fenced in, but we have um, grates in our in in we're on a slab no crawl space. So we have grates in the bottom of our home vents, not grates vents. And Leo has knocked these vents out of our bottom of our foundation, crawls underneath the house, knocks another one out, and he's outside wandering my front yard. I have no idea why these dogs are escaping because we feed them, we give them shelter, we give them love. All they want to do is get out of this fence. I don't understand it. I, I don't understand it. Ugh. Okay, the last ornaments I wanna show you is a set of four. And these have gotten a lot of comments. They're always favorites when I show them. I finally fully finished them. So these are a set of four for my kids and my daughter-in-law. Each one will get one. And they are from Blackberry Lane Designs. Now, I've had these patterns for years and years and years and years. I know 123 Stitch still carries some Blackberry Lane Designs. I know Blackberry Lane has a website as well. I am not sure if you can contact her to ask her if she can re-release them or maybe order directly from her. Maybe she can do it as a PDF. I have no idea. I know that 123 Stitch does not have all of these and these are from different um, patterns. So I didn't do every single pattern in the set. I did the silhouette ones. With that said, I, let me show you the first one. So all of the dark, dark is stitched with three strands and the rest is stitched with two. And that's just so that that silhouette really shines. I restarted these three times and I finally got the right fabric, th the way that I wanted them. And they were, they were, per they were perfect to me. Have you ever had a pattern that you love so much and you really want to, to do it justice? And I, I didn't get it right. Like I kept starting it and I didn't like it. And I was like, hmm. And then I realized three strands for the dark section, two for everything else. It's on 14 count. So they're not huge. These are a nice size. And um, that is Mary and Joseph's trip into Bethlehem. These are the shepherds, uh, or the camels and the shepherds, the three wise men. Mary and Joseph over the cradle. I love that beam coming down from the star. It's just gorgeous. These are charted fantastically. And then here's the shepherds in the fields. It, they're just beautiful. So this one is my youngest son's Jesse's. How do I know that? Because when I give them ornaments like this in a series, I will forget whose is who. I take a little tab of the, the fabric that I cut off as I'm finishing them and I 
um, I just backstitched their initials on them. So this is Jessie's. I use the same backing fabric for all. This, I, the backing fabric I found at Hobby Lobby and I got like two yards of it because it's perfect. This is Owens. This one is Mackenzie. No, that's Kyle's. I had to look at that. My oldest son who just got married and this would be Mackenzie's with her new uh, last name on there. So let me show them all together because they're just so stunning. And I want to stitch these for myself, for my tree, because eventually these ornaments leave. They don't stay on my tree. My son and his wife, they go to their house. Let me see if I can hold this up. Yes, I can do it with two hands. So they are stunning. I love them love them. I will, I, I am going to restitch these. I don't know when, but I'm going to restitch them. They are beautiful. And there's some other patterns in those patterns that I want to do. Okay. Let me show you my only finish that I have, which is a stocking. Now I had talked to you guys about doing a prairie schooler, uh, shepherd's bush mixed stocking. And that's what I did. So, I have one stocking done. I, I will fully finish them in probably groups of three or four. Um, or maybe I'll just wait till I get all the stockings done and then fully finish them all together because I'm obviously not going to make the cutoff for this year. So, I have plenty of time. This actually did not take as long as I thought it would. I really, really liked doing this. And so all of mine are going to be like this. Um, for my oldest son, Kyle, I use the uh, Santa Revisited. Um, he did the 2002 Santa, this Americana one. And so I did the shepherd's bush and I can't remember if this is, I can't remember whose stocking this is. So you have the little snowflakes. It's sh that shows up better. It's catching the light, but it shows up better in person. So the top is shepherd's bush. Then we have the prairie schooler. And then we have the bottom shepherd's bush, the train. Now, I did use Prairie Schooler colors. Um, so I just picked colors where they appeared. And you can kind of see the outline of what the stocking will be. I did not do the basing line. I had um, asked some people if they stitch it and they kind of were like, it's up to you. Um, I need to watch Vanna's tutorial on finishing a Shepherd's Bush stocking. And I may end up going back there and stitching that in. I still have all the charts. It's no big deal. Um, but the first one is done. And if you guys know my struggle with stockings that I had, I'm so impressed that I got one done. <coughs> Excuse me. So I started on the second one. The second one is for my second oldest son, Owen. He chose the... 1985 Santa, which is this guy with the long beard. He is the only one that has a long beard because he said he looked like a hobo. Owen's a very weird child. I don't understand why he does stuff like that. I'm also using Parker's Shepherd's Bush stocking. I did bring that over here with me. So I have the top done, I have the prairie schooler halfway done, and then I'll do this bottom, which I really like this bottom part. So I have stitched these on 14 count, picture this plus murky over two. Yes, I'm stitching these as if they're even weave. That's how I'm getting them so big. So initially a shepherd's bush stocking is done on 18 count over two. That's why they are big stockings. 
I do have 18 count murky, but I, I don't have a lot of it and it's really hard to find. I have tons of 14 count. When I say tons, I have an entire drawer full of murky and 14 count is the majority of that's in there. 14 count comes up on one, two, three stitch quite often. Um, it's easy for me to pick up another yard. And I figured as we add people to the stockings that I wanna do, that's an easy size for me to get. Plus it gives me a nice big size stocking. So this is Owens. So I have the top part, I have his name. There is his uh, hobo Santa with his beard. I have to finish filling in this, fill in the trim line on the bottom of his coat and put his shoes in. He also needs his eye, but his eye is the same color as shoes, so I'll add that in um, when I get to it. And then below that will be the bottom picture. So I'm, I'm making good progress on these and they're a lot of fun to stitch. So I like Shepherd's Bush. I love the big stockings. I like that they're a stocking, they're personalized, but they're not a full coverage. Full coverage, when you're, when you're looking down the barrel at doing six, that's a lot to get done. And I thought, okay, I need to make this more reasonable. Six full coverage stockings is gonna take me forever. Um, these are more manageable, but I loved adding in the Prairie Schooler aspect because I'm a huge Prairie Schooler fan. Um, so combining the two works really good. And I am a fan of Prairie Schooler colors. So they look great on murky. Um, so that's, that's why I did that. So it's been fun. And if you look at the patterns, I think I told you guys this before. If you look at the patterns, there's three clear sections. There's a top, there's the middle, and then there's the bottom. I'm simply taking out the pit middle and adding in a yearly Santa that my kids chose, whichever one they want. As in Owen's case, apparently it is a hobo Santa. Okay, so that's the stitching that I've been doing. I've been busy with that. I've also been sick. Um, so I think I wasted three days. I have no idea what I had. Could be the flu, could have been COVID, could have been just a cold. Um, but my husband had it, I had it, my son had it, um, his wife had it. So far, my two youngest have not gotten it. So um, everybody around here is sick. And so, you know, it, it could be just basic germs. I mean, it's winter time, you know, we're sniffling, we're sneezing. It was a little bit more than just sinuses though, because we all ran a fever. So, and I don't feel like you really get a fever with sinus unless you have an infection and we weren't sick long enough to get an infection. So I don't know what it is. We are all on the mend. We are all feeling better and that's the main thing. So, all right, I wanna show you some stash and then that's it. This is a quick floss tube. So I got this pattern. It's called Christmas Stamps by Anna Gut Gutvo. Gut I'm not saying her name right. Oh, Art Mishka Cross Stitch. That's better. Um, I really liked these. Hold on and I'll show you the name of it. It's on Etsy. I really like these because look at all the Santa faces. They will make really great small ornaments. So I thought that was a really good, for that many patterns, that was a good price. And I think I got it on sale. Okay, I did get an order from uh, 123 Stitch, which was a new Luca S kit. And I keep saying I am going to do one of these kits very soon. This one was the, what is this called? Santa's Express White. I think it's beautiful. Just stunning. Um, I really like how they're boxed up. You can see the flosses in here. They also have a code on the front of them where it tells you like if they have back stitching, like what kind of level it is. And I really like that. I mean, not that that matters because I would stitch it irregardless, but I kind of like that add-on on there. This was another one that is Luca S. I think it's beautiful. I don't know how I ever didn't see it before, but I love the dog, the Santa's list. I think it's just beautiful. There is a lot of colors in that one. So very pretty though. And I couldn't pass up 
This one, which is Santa's Express, the regular color. Apparently I was in a train mood. Lots and lots of floss too. I ordered this one, which is called Be Mine. I love these little vintage, like Valentine's Day prints. I love that and that's what that reminds me of. And that's from a um, La Pointe de Cro I don't know how to say their name. There they are. They're on one, two, three stitch. And I got the new Plum Street Samplers, The New World. I think that's really pretty. Okay, and I also got S is for, and this is from Finally a Farm Girl. Now, I do not know how I missed this one before because that Santa and that snowman is brilliant. Finally a Farm Girl on Etsy. These are brilliant. These are adorable. Chrissy, I, how did I miss this? How did I, I think I even asked on her post, I'm like, oh, who's the designer of that little finish that you have? And one of her friends, Linda, popped in and said, that's her design. And I was like, stop it. How did I miss this? I didn't, because now I have it. Really cute. This is definitely going to be stitched. Okay, this one is Bony Bunch from Plum Street Sampler. I just love these skeletons. Those are really cute. I also got Christmas Parade. Now, I wasn't going to do the whole thing, but I have seen this stitched, and let me tell you, it's really cute. Um, it is 200 by 100 stitches. It's so cute. With the little animals that, I think I'm gonna have to stitch it just as it is. I love Santas that are doing different things, so I always kind of buy that kind of stuff. And I might just pull the Santa out, but I think the animals are adorable. Okay, this one is one that I had only seen um, on one, two, three stitch. Now it is a kit and um, looks like they have some other kits really cute. Uh, this is DIY kits. I'm trying to find a name. I don't see a name on here, but it's religious and I loved them. So I bought that, one, two, three stitch. And then I bought the craft home from Bothy Threads, which is a cut through craft house. That is adorable. So that would be really cute in a craft room. So I had to get that one too. And Bothy kits are really nice too. That one's taped down, so I'm not gonna open it right now, but it'll come with the floss and the fabric and they're always very well done, so. All right, we are under 30 minutes. Can you believe that for a floss tube? I know, right? Anyhow, um, I am going to work on the stocking. I think because I'm really geared up and energized to do it, I'm going to continue on at least until I get the kids' stockings all done. I might take a break and then finish me and my husband's, but I might just keep going and get them all done. That way I can fully finish them all together. So um, that's a goal for the new year, um, finish up these stockings. It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed stitching them. And I really like combining the two patterns together because I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm getting a nice big stocking, which is what I wanted, but Prairie Schooler, which is another thing that I really wanted. So, okay, I hope you guys have a good Christmas, stay healthy, um, and I will, hopefully have more progress to show you soon. Take care, have a good Merry Christmas, and I'll see you soon.